All right, guys, welcome back to our mailbag segment here. We posted a thing on Facebook earlier this week. Uh, it was someone that had asked me about heartburn, GERD, reflux. How do you fix a hiatal hernia, and what do you do for that? You're never going to see reflux without one, okay? There, I've never, and I'm 20 years into practice. I specialize in digestion. I see it all the time. So I've always seen these sliding hernias constantly. So we look at that, and I had two ladies that commented down further below, and they were asking me some questions. They said, Doc, you know, what do you think about, I had paraesophageal hernia repair. So she's had that back in 2014. Big, big, big deal. The problem was is that it fixed things for a while. Now she's starting to get symptoms again, and she's wondering, is it possible that it didn't work? Yes. And I'll go through it here in a second. Because the lady below you then asked the question and says, you know, what do you know about achalasia? Achalasia is just that spasming that occurs. Now, it can happen in the esophagus where it tightens down. It can go anywhere through that GI tube. Sometimes you'll see it in the colon end, and they'll call it a Hirschsprung's disorder, where it tightens down down there. The key to it is, for some reason, the smooth muscle in the esophagus is getting a, a signal somewhere from the body electrically that spasm that up. Now the therapies they'll do, the one lady had surgery, but she's getting her symptoms back. Other options will be uh, calcium channel blockers of some sort, sometimes nitroglycerin they'll use. I've seen Botox being used. Hey, let's inject a poison into the area and try and shut that muscle down. Maybe balloons to stretch it. And now they've got a new surgery, and this one lady brought this up. It's a peroral esophageal myotomy. They go in with a camera, they get down in there, and they literally, they start snipping away the muscles in the esophagus to loosen it. I'm not against this. I understand why they do it. But you're not really finding the cause. You're sitting there looking at the effect. It's like a gallbladder problem. You know, let's pull it out. There's a problem there. I'm not against that if it's diseased or if it's completely dysfunctional. I understand why they do it. But nobody ever said why it went bad. And so when you pull that out, if the thing that caused that to go bad is still there, it's going to cause something else then down the road. You didn't get rid of the fire. It's you know in, in our line of work, they always call it the equivalent of unplugging an oil light on a car. Hey, the oil light's on. Unplug it. We don't need that. But you didn't fix why it's on. Or, oh, tire light comes on. It's low tire. Yeah, unplug it. But it didn't get rid of the low tire. So you have to look at cause and effect. And for some reason, in, in our world, in the healthcare world, we ignore the cause a lot. We say, well, you know, you got this. It's etiology unknown. Some people just get it. I don't accept that. I don't think that's true. So we have one young lady here telling us, look, I, I've had this done. Is it possible that what they did didn't work? It is possible. And if you go through the literature and the research, when they do esophageal stretching or repair, a lot of times it does not fix the problem long term. Why? They didn't get rid of the cause. So how do you do this? What do you do? What would I do if you were in my practice in front of me? I'd run a 24-hour UA. I want to know, nutrition-wise, are you getting the parts to heal? That's the first thing you look at. Can the body get what it, can you get what you need? Because if you can't get parts, if you can't digest things, if you don't absorb things well, if you don't transport or utilize those nutrients, you're wasting your time. The body's falling apart faster than you can repair it. All right, so start there. Now that's going to steer you into systems. The body has 10 organ systems that are designed to do nothing but keep you alive. Pay attention to them. Digestion is one of those systems. So if you look at it and say, all right, I've got digestive problems. That system then is putting up the fight. Support that system. Try to remove the stress off that system. And you go back and you look at things. We talk about this all the time. Nutrition obviously is a big player here. The lining of the intestinal tract, it needs things. It needs fluid. Water is very, very important for it. It needs fatty acids. It needs alkaline minerals. But if you're taking a proton pump inhibitor, which is very common when you have GERD and reflux and all these things, you're shutting down the mineral absorption. You can't get them in. So then you can't fix the problem. And the longer you take the med, the more likely you're going to have the problem. But if you stop the med, another lady further up said, God, if I stop it, I'm in all kinds of trouble. Why? She didn't put out the fire. 
They put a fire truck in there and it's making her life more quality filled, which is great. But you didn't put out the fire. So while that truck's in place, while the medication's there, another doctor like myself should be in there saying, okay, why do we need this? Can we find that cause and remove it? If we fix this, then we can send the truck back to the station. We don't need it anymore. Worst case scenario, we keep the truck there, but we fix why the problem started. And we help the body get the minerals and all the things it needs, even while the truck's in place. That's sure better than not fixing it. That's how we start these sort of things. Acupuncture would be a definite must here, I think, with all these people. Because you look at it and you think, all right, well, what does it do? It deals with the nervous system. You're taking a metal pole and sticking it into an electric field. Well, what's going on here? Spasm, right? Echolasia is a spasm. So you look at that and think, all right, it's smooth muscle. That means it's getting an electrical signal from somewhere. Put some poles in, change that current, change the signal, see if it doesn't release. There's a million things you can do in my line of work that help these sort of things. I see this every single day. I've seen post-operative, pre-operative, not sure what to do, on meds for two decades, on meds for two weeks. It's just a matter of looking for that cause. Find the cause. Try to remove it. Nourish the body back to health. And if you do that, all of these things can be a thing of your past. I hope that helps you guys.